Hello, I'm Claire Kopenhofer. I'm a graduate student at Michigan State University. And I want to tell you guys today about a recent paper of ours. Uh, it's not exactly about the CGM, but it does raise some interesting questions for the role that circumgalactic medium plays in Clemson Galaxy. So in this paper, uh, we used illustrious TNG to try to figure out what was going on with an unusual population of observed galaxies. Traditionally, we think of galaxies as having blue star forming disks dominated by young stars and centers that appear red because they're dominated by older stars and have no recent star formation. But Tuttle and Tonneson in 2020 found a population of galaxies that appears to be the inverse of this. They have recent star formation in their centers and red disks. They called these galaxies the breakbird galaxies. And so on the one hand, we have the observed population of breakbird galaxies, but of course the other great tool in astronomy is simulations and theory. And so we, with illustrious TNG, we wondered, can we find galaxies in the simulation that are analogs to the observed breakbirds? So we looked at a couple of different redshifts, mostly low redshifts, and we applied the same observational cuts that were used for the observed breakbirds. Um, we applied those to mock spectra and broadband colors to select our an analog breakbirds. This resulted in a set of galaxies and multiple redshifts that were pretty uniform in their physical properties. And we took these galaxies and we split them further into centrals and satellites because both should evolve differently. So the paper has a lot of results. I encourage you to go read it for more information. But here's a selected list of things that are most relevant, sort of how I'm going to tie this into the circumflex medium. First, our cut selected galaxies that had centrally concentrated star formation rates and dense gas. And this high central concentration was due to gas stripping from the outskirts. This was even true for the central galaxies. It's a little bit easier to see how this might be for satellite galaxies because of things like ram pressure stripping, but we found it for both kinds. We didn't find a clear explanation for how the central breakbirds evolved. Again, this is a little bit clearer to see for things like satellites where environment is a huge factor and that's what we determined in this paper. But for the centrals, we couldn't find a clear cause among environment or black holes or the history of galaxy mergers. And the use of you know, selecting galaxies at multiple redshifts let us see sort of how they, the breakbird galaxies would eventually end up. And one of the big things we found is that 90% of the analogs at redshift 0.5 quenched in the five gig years of evolution towards redshift zero. So very much the breakbird galaxies are at least in a uh, simulation, are quenching galaxies. And we sort of make this a general behavior because again, our selection uh, of applying the color cuts picked out a set of galaxies with very uniform physical properties. So since this is a workshop about the CGM, what does this have to do with the CGM? Well, again, breakbird galaxies are quenching galaxies. And for the centrals, there's no clear, clear claw, yeah, excuse me, clear cause of this behavior. So that leads us to ask, what does the CGM look like in transitional galaxies like breakbirds? Well, this is ongoing work that I am doing. So it's very preliminary, but we are seeing a difference in CGM properties between star forming, transitional, and quench galaxies. And I hope you keep this sort of on your radar uh, as sort of CGM stuff. And if you're interested in galaxy evolution more generally, I hope you go read this paper because I think it's personally very interesting. But I'm excited to tell you more about what this means for the CGM and quenching galaxies in the future. Thank you.